question for Harry about uh, um, you know managing these higher construction costs through value engineering, and if you wanted to give any uh, uh, nice examples of that, uh, perhaps. No, there's no I, nice examples. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, so not so nice ones. Yeah. Maybe, I but, think uh, what you know, kind of our motto in our office is, if we get to a point where we have to value engineer, we haven't done our job right with our client. You know, we are. And it comes to the relationship of contractors and open and transparency, all these same key topic points. But we are, again, have set our schedules and our delivery methods and our review periods with budget check-ins and budget exercises. So if it's a $50 million project, we know at every phase it's going to be 49, it's going to be 52. We're having that conversation. And before we have to value engineer, we can make smarter decisions. So we can say... We've already assumed uh, operational efficiencies for smart systems in the HVAC. So, yes, we're paying $50 more a room for this thermostat, but it's going to save you $10,000 a year in HVAC, right? So having those conversations, it, it's, value engineering is, in my opinion, always a myth that you're not, it's not value engineering. It's, it's, you're getting something less for, and you're paying less for it. Uh, so our goal as designers and managing our expectations and our GCs is, delivering that same quality level in a smarter way, right? So how do we just do that through this whole process? So you're getting what you're paid for, you're getting what you're investing, the brand is happy, and again, if, it, if the project and the market is 10% higher, the, we can't be 10% out of a project, so we just have yeah. to do the best we can. Just save, it, save in the right areas, right? We're saving the right areas, making the same recommendations. It doesn't have to be marble in the bathrooms. This porcelain tile looks the same thing, it's gonna deliver the same thing, and if you're, you know, and will the brand accept uh, wood-looking vinyl baseboard instead of wood base Real. in the room? Real. The guest isn't going to know. They're not going to get down and pick at it. And so the brands have to make some decisions at their quality levels, and we're making decisions at the design level, but we're trying to deliver the same products you know, in a market where everybody can afford it, and it makes sense. Yeah, we're yeah. Not, we're not. I agree, and it's very important that um, early on in the project, that ownership and management and the designer have to be on the same page. There are instances 100%. where the designer wants to over-design it, yeah. and you have to be you, you have to have the ability or have the, the relationship to, to have that interaction. Say, yeah. hey, to your point, I don't want to do engineered wood because engineered wood is harder yeah. to maintain. It's going to wear. You know, if the brand's okay with LV, you yeah. know, the, yeah. just those types of examples. Some designers will dig their heels in that, and and you really have to, you know. You have to manage that process yeah. a little bit. All yeah, our, our thing is the vision and getting everybody what they have in their mind and what they, what they promised everyone. Now, at the end of the day, if our client comes back and says, you know what, we, in the last two projects we've done, we've had a problem with LVT. Yeah. We're going to do engineered wood or real wood. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, that's going to cost you, you know, an extra $150,000. Fine, I'll talk to our capital investors and we'll make sure we can find it. Yeah. Right? And we just make that decision. Yep. Yeah. Right? And you know, let's save on wall vinyl, let's go to paint. Mm -hmm. Great, brands mm -hmm. usually on board with it. It's great in southern you know, markets where there's mold and right. things like that, that walls can breathe. It's just trying to make smarter decisions. Process, so. I think also what leads in before Harry and his crew even gets involved is, is the brand's responsibility to, to put out a prototype that's, you know, that's scalable, that's going to meet the guests mm -hmm. where they are today yep. and still deliver that, right. that expectation. One of the things we did, um, made a conscious decision to do during uh, the pandemic was, with all this energy and, and travel to these secondary uh, and leisure markets, we knew that the prototype that we were building in the primary urban markets, if we were trying to replicate that in the secondary market where the rev bar is technically generally lower, yeah. probably wasn't going to work out as well for the developers from a return perspective. So we went and, and totally retooled the, the prototype, took 25,000 square feet out of the building, really took a hard look at how we were uh, developing how we were delivering food and beverage and how important that was to the guests. We, we don't, there was a little bit, of, at the end of every cycle, if you go back in the time, there's always like this arms race for amenities <laughs> that, that brands build on and there's always rep bar there to support it and people keep up with it. But when that fell off the table, you really have to take a hard look at what you're making your owners provide the guests and is that profitable? Yeah. At the same time, choice, we don't take a fee on our food and beverage. So like, why are we adding all this cost to our owner? When, how important is it? So we really dial back our food and beverage offering, um, but still put out a very nice, um, far forward, upscale food and beverage right. offering to that guest, but at a much more economic. And what, economic and what you dial back on gives you more uh, funds to make an impact where you feel you need to make it. 
right. for the guest experience. It's about right sizing. That's yeah, how exactly. I describe yeah. it. It's not about kind we are or we aren't building the yeah. the right hotel in the right location. Yeah, so, so like on that note, so you've got sort of a minimum standard threshold, but mm -hmm. then if you go into an Austin, you go into you know a de a Denver, and you want to do something that elevates that at the experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That should be a good thing, not mm -hmm. a bad thing. And the brand shouldn't fight you on that. Like right. that's, right. If the rate of the market and the location yeah. is there to support it, yeah. we're totally and, 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 and you know, the days of the customer, the concern about the customer saying, well, I stayed at this hotel and they didn't have it, so I'm going to get to it. It just doesn't matter. And I mean, customers are looking for experience, you know, so I think that's smart to look at it like that because you do. One yeah. so right. Before you guys start arguing about finishes, we've just taken 25,000 <laughs> square feet out of the building that yeah. should give you some flexibility right. and still yeah. you know, finish out of the hotel. Yeah. The soft way. brands and the renovations is where those conversations are more right. outside the brand because, well, renovations, no, because I think adjusting expectations of what you require in a seven year or 14 year and how much effort goes into it and exterior renovations, that's when it gets really tough. I, I laugh at seven years. <laughs> I just, I, yeah. it makes me, I just look at it and I go, if you can tell me what this hotel is going to look like, this market's going to be in seven years, right. I would love to borrow that crystal ball for, yeah. for a day. I know. Yeah. Well, we know. The point <laughs> is, so trust us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. Full circle around when you're talking about, you know, uh, a designer and the cost and the branding and the like. And one of the things that I know that Choice does so well is being able to have the, the employees themselves have a positive disposition. You know, being able to be, I mean, those are things that are free, right? right. The reality is, you know, when you have small talk, the discussion of, you know, someone's checking in, you're talking about what was the naming reason for yeah. the hotel, that's free. free. I mean, once you train it, right? Yeah. Train, you know, train this concept. And so the reality is, all these things we talk about that from a VEA or cost escalation, you can get that back oh. with just having Huge. great employees and folks that have a great positive yeah. Yeah. Um, culture. Culture, we, yeah. Cool. We really looked at that entire, they're not a front desk. Right. They're first impression team. Right? Yeah. They are concierge. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They are guest service agents. Yes. They might check you in, might make a reservation on the phone, but they are the ones that know the area. Yeah. They know the cool happening that is not in the paper that might be down the street at a new local restaurant yeah. and there's this local band or there's an artesian fair down the street or there's a car show today or something. They are that one that it is, they are that front line of making that experience. And I love how you said training them on the story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take that one home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, you do. It's like when we opened our one that we named after one of our founders. We trained every single one on why it was called that and who she was and what she was like. And, you know, I mean, it does. It does. They are not front desk agents. No. Uh, so, so, Rachel, has your training process, like, evolved uh, to it become has. more, uh, yes. uh, you know, yes. have, have them be more knowledgeable and interactive with the guests, I guess, on certain things that they didn't used to be? Yeah, so uh, we utilize, obviously, with amazing support out of Choice Hotels with their Choice University, we utilize that. That's a, that's a standard. They have to complete all their Choice U training before they even touch our front desk. Um, and then we get them out into the community. So mm -hmm. routinely, we are budgeting to send them out. If there's a new local restaurant or if there's something happening, mm -hmm. we're sending our front desk teams out right. to experience, really to great. get into the community. They are volunteering with the chamber. We get out and do all sorts of things around the holidays, um, community service events, and really getting them more out and immersed in mm -hmm. their communities so that they can create that really genuine experience. Yeah. It's not they're, fake. They're just not there to check somebody yeah. in. You're Much trying to do everything you can. Yeah. I think collectively, as operators, developers, owners, brands, we have to make it attractive and cool to be in this industry. Mm -hmm. And that's, and you know, anybody can, go on, anybody can go on YouTube and see you know, people at the front desk getting reviews. And, and so that, that mm -hmm. that's a, uh, you know, a, a moniker that we've got to get away from. We have to attract talent. You know, yeah. our industry is one of the few industries where you can get in at an entry level and move up a ladder very, very quickly yeah. and yeah. to a point where I mean, it's unbelievable what we pay, you know, some of our managerial positions. And so that's a story that I think collectively, brands included, we, we have to start telling that story again. Like, 
I get that, you know, there was beautiful pools and people sitting poolside, but I'm waiting for the brands to collaborate and start talking about case. There's so many great case studies of young people that have gone through our industry and changed yeah, their point. lives. Like, we should be telling that story. Yeah. And it's, it's hard for us to tell that story because we're small, but, you know, there's a lot of bigger platforms. Yeah. 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 HLA has started an initiative yeah. uh, to, to try and do exactly that, you yeah. know, with um, really just repositioning, like you said, yeah. trying to evolve the brand yeah. that the industry has. Yeah. I mean, what our reputation is currently, yeah. which even if you look at like universities and all like hotel programs, enrollment is down. Yeah. So we're going to have a bigger problem in five to 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. with uh, managerial type of positions. And so AHLA is really trying to pull the industry together so that we can tell a much bigger, to your point, much bigger brand story or industry story instead of telling you we, about we, why this yeah. is a great business to be in. We have to, we have to approach our industry like it's its own trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's because yeah. it's it's a different industry. People are staying with you overnight. The interaction is different. Uh, yeah. You know, the, it's different than somebody going to a restaurant for an hour or two. It has, when we reinvent, how we define our associates in our industry, that's when I think we'll really make progress. And if we're able to kind of approach it like a train, I think that that yeah. will be a big. What's so unique about our industry, I think it sets us apart is, you know, let's say you come in on the operation side, entry level, and you work your way up a little bit, but then you realize, hey, you know, I, I really have more interest and passion about the finance side, yeah. or the construction mm -hmm. side, yeah. the architectural side, yeah. the food and beverage. There's, 10 different streamlines yeah. heading up that you can jump to and learn and, and get into, you know, find your passion within the industry. Yeah, yeah. I don't think every industry will. No, no, it's, no. It's, it's, no. It's, it's, here's another little dirty little secret from an operating standpoint, which I know you'll know. It's a soft record. <laughs> once, no, exactly. once you have a really good associate and then you're starting to show a desire to look, you do not want, you don't yeah. let that associate go. No, right. Right. You do not right. let that, you're like, okay, what do you want to do? Yeah. What do you want to, where do you want to go? What do you like? You want to move? That's you know. There's the there's we'll play after the sea. This is going to come. Yeah, yeah. we we have, we have a we have a up or out. You know, scenario. <laughs> you're either going up or you're probably out. So you mean you're going to leave me? You know? yeah. So I've got to find that pathway for you. Not your point. You said the word free earlier. I mean to to keep people. Yeah. And, and do good. Have good culture. Mm -hmm. Have great experiences. Have a company that you feel you feel vested in. Yeah. That to create that feeling. It's free. It's free. Right? It's it's just how you want to operate, and yeah. especially in this market where we can't find people. Yeah. No, we don't want to lose people. And if there's always going to be bad eggs, so how can we manage that process and turn that around and, and create a great place that people want to work and don't want to leave because they can make a dollar more an hour somewhere else, but they feel part of the community. And I can go to these restaurants. My company, every time there's a new restaurant, they send it to me. Mm -hmm. They send me there, like, that's great. One more thing oh, on yes. that. Reward and recognition is a big part of that. Yeah, and yeah. Rachel's yeah. not telling their full story yeah. yet, but like at convention this year, <laughs> Lincoln Properties brought line staff even to conventions so not just general managers and directors of sales but they brought line staff that were their up-and-comers like and, and um they rented a disco party bus and, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and, Las Vegas awesome. and had special meals with them and um i it's guarantee culture. all these yeah, people are still culture. there aren't they they are yeah. we and janice is correct we we went above and beyond but what we found is there was an analogy that I was given years ago by another, I, this is my second career, so, um, is, it's called fill your cup, right? Because we're all vessels, we right. all know this, we don't automatically fill our cups, it, it's gone, it's gone. And so, really, all, the executive team at Lincoln Asset looked at our GMs, and we looked at our AGMs and a couple of our line staff, and they were tired, and they needed to see that they were more than just on that property. Right. And they're exhausted. Pandemic was exhausting. It's been exhausting for us. So So we took them. We went to was in Vegas. We picked them up in a bus. We took them out. And you know what? A couple of them, one of them had never flown. I was going to say, you might find that's never been on a plane before. We did. Yeah. That was interesting. <laughs> and, you know, bless their hearts. They did a great job. But they all went back with this light in their eyes that's and yeah. went into summer with all these new great ideas. Yeah. And the best part, is they were now a team. Yeah. yeah. And so as they're regional, I think they're all like do it, siloed still. No, no. 
They're texting each other. They're yeah, calling each good. other. They're getting ideas. They're looking for new experiences, cost savings. And it has just been so filling for them. And I think that that's what we do as an organization, and that's what we do as hospitality, is we want to make sure if, if my leaders feel that we care and we fill their cups and we engage with them, they're going to engage with their, their teams, and that's our medallion scores are higher for summer. I've never seen these scores as high as they are with our busier season because the teams were happy. And it's going to help differentiate you as an employer, right? And uh, helps with uh, retention and traction as they tell they tell their their friends in the field about what you do, right? And, uh, perfect. So, kind of a spontaneous topic for us there. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, how to build a, and establish a great team. Well, then I, I thank everybody for their insights on this. <laughs> and, uh, Great job covering this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trying to guide things along. Uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had aimed for this to be a uh, uh, lively, uh, intimate discussion. I think that's exactly what it was. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you George. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mark.